Welcome to Are You Aware? A mostly visual presentation on the Illuminati. 4,000 images in 4 hours for the rest of your life. This is version 3 and it represents over 3 years of research uh, into the subjects that you're going to witness here during this presentation. I began my study into government corruption, global corruption in about uh, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 1999. Uh, and about 2009, I finally realized that the underlying uh, aspect of all of this was a religious system uh, underlying this uh, this uh, power-hungry, greed, uh, corrupted society, uh, especially at the top level. So I want you, uh, please, to open your minds to this presentation and understand where uh, where this presentation is and the symbols that uh, I can show you that prove this fact. As a warning, this presentation includes a graphic exposure of evil. 18 and over is recommended. 14 to 17 years should be accompanied by a parent or guardian. In addition, the content and message of this presentation may cause individuals to react with extreme emotion, including shock, denial, realization, conviction, confusion, and or sadness. We encourage all who view this presentation to maintain a maturity level that is constructive to seeking the truth about the reality of the world in which we live. Now, these are important things to note. There are persons of differing worldviews and beliefs who may be viewing this presentation. The worldview and, and belief expressed in this presentation may differ from your own. Please remember you are fully entitled to form your own opinions about what is presented. This presentation is meant for information, not indoctrination. In other words, there is no attempt being made to brainwash you. If you take offense to seeing or hearing differing worldviews or beliefs, this is not a presentation for you. Now, since this is mostly a visual presentation with live commentary, sources of information may not be cited. It is, uh, if there is subject matter presented in which you wish to investigate, please make a note of it. We encourage all to research a subject in question in order to draw your own individual conclusions. Remember, you do not have to believe everything that is stated in this presentation. You are fully entitled to your own views, opinions, and beliefs. It is essential to see this presentation in its entirety. The presentation is cumulative, meaning each subsequent section builds upon the previous section. In presenting an entire concept or case from beginning to end, missing parts of the presentation may cause gross, gross misinterpretations and or misunderstandings. We will not accept responsibility for this. And so I ask you again to understand that I have a particular belief system, a worldview, and it may differ from your own, but please keep an open mind to what I'm talking about. General agenda and topics. Uh, when I give the live presentation, it is broken up into two parts of two hours long. This particular video section is going to be the entire presentation, which, which could be up to six or more hours, I believe. Basic symbolism we're going to cover in part one, uh, and that includes intermediate and more advanced symbolism. The interpretation of that symbolism also in mass media and we cover secret societies in the beginning of secret societies here uh, with regard to Freemasonry um, history politics religion in part two and mass social programming and in the last section we cover some case studies with regarding uh, with regard to that key concepts in symbolism I want us to understand there is what's called the esoteric meaning. When you are part of a society or a secret society, you get the initiated meaning. And some uh, meanings in the initiated uh, are also false on the lower degrees. But uh, in general sense, esoteric meaning means the initiated, secret, or insider meaning. The exoteric meaning is the meaning for the uninitiated people. I am an uninitiated person. Uh, person in a secret society, therefore I get the outside meaning or the deceptive meaning. And an example of this is the symbol on the back of the dollar bill, which is the what people say is the all-seeing eye or the eye of providence. That is the exoteric meaning. I will show you in this uh, presentation that the esoteric meaning uh, is different. As above, so below is a concept in the occult. 
as above means heaven or the male aspect. So below means earth or the female aspect. Heaven above, earth below, male, female. And try not to read into it too much, uh, um, but uh, that is the occult uh, understanding of as above, so below. Very simple meaning. of. I challenge you on two things. Do you really believe what you believe is the truth? I'm going to repeat that. Do you really believe that what you believe is the truth? I challenge you to challenge your idea of what your truth is, whether or not you've investigated things on your own or not. Because I found out three years ago that there is a mass programming and we are shaped by the world, not around us, but what, what we've been taught by their system and the control of that system, our education, our media, our politics, everything. Condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance meaning that if you're going to condemn anything or have a bias toward a particular worldview without investigating that worldview fully, and a lot of us just say, you know, we've investigated it or we take our worldviews by what we see on television, uh, in particular what we see religiously on television, and I'm going to tell you if you have that bias, I'm going to tell you what is on television is an act and a show and does more harm uh, uh, to what I believe in my system uh, and to show you that there is a cons concerted effort to sway you from your belief by a bias toward what you see on television uh, and in the movies. Condemnation, again, without investigating, is the height of ignorance. Please investigate for yourself. Concepts I want us to understand, the walls of your mind. We have preconceptions again and misconceptions again. And we've developed these walls psychologically in our mind, and we've refused to see anything there. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Research all religious views and come to your own conclusions. And I have done so, and I, can, I urge you to do so, and that's why I believe what I believe. Remember, it's not what I believe, it's what you believe, and I want you to understand that. There are also walls that we still have yet that we discover more truth with. The second concept is the concept of the counterfeit. I have come to find out in my research, uh, and this is now, uh, uh, but uh, going back here, this is there is the real or the truth and the false and lies. They look the same, smell the same, feel the same, but they are fundamentally different. And I'll show you that uh, in religion we have this these concepts as well. We have concepts that are similar with regard to morals, but fundamentally different with regard to the the basis of the religious view. Uh, fantasizing reality is another concept. This is important. We tend to, uh, well, when you have movies and television, when you watch these, these are designed in a Hegelian dialectic method. You have thesis and against antithesis, which brings synthesis. Uh, when you uh, design a movie or write a script, um, they're, you're taught to have the protagonist and the antagonist, and these are opposing uh, uh, views, and then uh, there's always a synthesis of these two in the end, and this is called the Hegelian dialectic, and this is what shapes our understanding. Fantasizing reality has to do with things that we see in the movies that we consider myth or fantasy. So you'll see demonic images, spiritual images, all of this stuff manifesting on a 2D screen. And really, I've come to believe that the spiritual aspects of these are, in fact, reality when we are programmed to such a point that we would consider a movie being completely fantasy and therefore disregard anything that has to do with the spirit. Now, here is uh, an example of what I believe, and so I'm going to push this on to you uh, as information rather than indoctrination. You don't have to believe this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. This is in 2 Timothy 1.7. In my worldview and my belief system, this, there is no paranoia. So this is conspiracy theory and conspiracy stuff, and a lot of people want to take up arms and go shoot something or blow something up. There is none of that idea or intent in my worldview uh, as a Christian worldview. Uh, note that every, this is important, note that every symbol is uh, used is 
not every symbol used is del deliberate, meaning that we uh, have to understand the context and the content of that particular use of the symbol, whether or not it's a staged or not. And so we want to bring in reason here. But I have come to find out in my research that in the 90th percentile, this is all deliberate. And I'm going to present those concepts to you. Whether or not you believe them or not is up to you. Now remember, please, uh, before I became to, uh, came to believe what I believed, I had a bias toward anything that had to do with the Bible, for instance. So please, uh, uh, by all means, just this is information. And so I wanted to prove to you what the Bible says about uh, Jesus. So in this case, what Jesus says in John 18:37, to this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. So Jesus is claiming that there is truth, and truth can be known, and he is bearing witness of that truth. So what his purpose is uh, to be born on this world. John 18:44, and the asterisk is partial of the verse, Existence of the devil and lies. Ye are of your father the devil. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So he is uh, uh, proving that he uh, understands that there is a devil and that the devil uh, is a liar. So understanding uh, that there is lie. John 8, 57 to 58, claiming God as a self-admonition. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Uh, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham I am. This I am refers to the Old Testament Yahweh in the Bible. I am that I am, that Moses uh, uh uh, understood uh, was the name of God. So in this case, Abraham is a patriarch, much older than, of course, Jesus, but Jesus is now claiming Godhood, and they knew exactly what he was saying when he said, I am. So this is one of seven I am's in the book of John. Uh, so uh, it's clear that he was claiming that he was God. Now claiming God in John 10.33 as an accusation by the Jews. The Jews answer him saying, for a for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou art, that thou, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So uh, it's clear that what the Jews understood is that he was claiming godhood. So I'm still reiterating that point. John 3, 16 to 17, one of the most famous verses ever uh, recited, salvation's promise and a purpose. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So this idea of an eternal everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this understanding of salvation and his reason for coming, um, and that's why as a Christian they say, are you saved? John 14.6, exclusivity to himself. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Fundamentally, or fundamental to Christianity, is the, uh, the truth to us that uh, Jesus is the only way for salvation, uh, not a universal, all religion, uh, worshiping the same God way. Moving on, understanding who the devil is. And so in John, and I use, like to use John in the previous one because it's, it's, a, it's a nice thread, but in this case I do use other uh, sections of the Bible, John 8, 37, devil as a prince or ruler. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world or the ruler of this world be cast out. So understanding the devil has dominion on this world and currently rules this world. So that is an, a key concept. Here is 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. Devil as God who blinds. So, but if our gospel be hid, to, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, the little g, God, referring to Satan and Lucifer and the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So, this idea of this prince and this God. Same meaning, just a different uh, uh, use of the word. Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, devil as a counterfeit. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? 
I will be like the Most High, and later in that section, yet, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So Lucifer, as a fallen angel, he wants to be like the Most High. This is a very key concept that he uh, is counterfeiting God. And then, of course, here is the use of hell uh, as well. Second Corinthians 11, 14 to 15. Devil plus his ministers, potential for de deception. So we understand that the, de the devil uh, has uh, minions, um, a.k.a. Uh, fallen angels uh, that are uh, partnering with him. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, meaning that they can transform and look completely, i.e., like a Christian or somebody that is completely righteous. And this is a huge concept to understand how aware we should be as Christians. Uh, and from my standpoint, Revelation 12:9, devil and Satan as dragon and serpent. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. So the devil... Uh, called the devil and Satan. So the devil as a dragon and a serpent, uh, the devil is Satan uh, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Meaning now referencing Satan, his fall and the fallen angels to this planet. And that is clear in the Bible. Matthew 25, 41, understanding hell. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Understanding that this is an everlasting uh, punishment in hell, uh, and it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Mark 4, 47 to 48, hell as eternal. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. This is Jesus speaking. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes uh, to be cast into hell fire. The seriousness of our life. Um, as a Christian and understanding that we're atoned by Jesus and his death on the cross. This is an atonement for, for sins. We're going to get into the understanding of, of this. I know it sounds like fantasy, but please just bear with this whole thing and you'll come to understand there's something very deceiving going on. Continuing on with that, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, meaning that hell is a place of eternal punishment and it a, is a some form of physical, ongoing punishment. There is a serious to all of this thing, and we have to take our life very serious uh, because we're thinking uh, beings, and that we have to take it so serious to the point we understand what's going on. And finally, Matthew 16 to 26, a world against the soul. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We understand that there's morals in this world and that there's there's evil in this world and pursuit and of money and all that leads to greed and all of this stuff. It's ubiquitous throughout uh, religions in the world, uh, this moral idea. But there is a fundamental difference between their morality and their idea of enlightenment as opposed to the Christian uh, aspect of it. So it sounds and looks all the same, but it's fundamentally different, and I'll show you that uh, throughout this presentation. Ephesians 6.12, the battle is spiritual, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now we're understanding that there's a spirit world, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, meaning that this world is dark. And I'm going to show you uh, and prove that to you it's something that we've been conditioned to not understand. Ephesians 5.11, purpose is uh, exposing evil. The purpose of this presentation is to expose evil um, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove or expose them. This is exactly what we're doing here. I hope you can understand what the purpose of this presentation is, and uh, I look forward to uh, to you reviewing the entire presentation. Uh, we can be found at www.thisprophecy.com, youtube.com, this prophecy, facebook.com, this prophecy, twitter.com, this prophecy, and this prophecy at gmail.com is our uh, email address. Uh, if you want to give a home presentation, a church presentation, uh, or an organization presentation, this is both for 
inside churches and outside churches. People need to know about the Illuminati from all aspects. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy.